The Michigan State Education Abroad Office helped with a smooth transition into finding a program that would fit my needs and I found myself applying to Tel Aviv University in Tel Aviv, Israel. Um, at Tel Aviv University is a school of about 30,000 students and um, I wanted to go there just because I wanted to push myself out of my comfort zone and um, my whole goal of being study abroad was to explore somewhere that I had never been before and that I wasn't comfortable with. So it hit all those check marks and the Education Abroad Office made it super easy. My classes were very similar to a recitation or a small lecture um, on Fridays that I would have home at Michigan State University. So um, it'd be about 35 kids. The course listing was actually very extensive. There was programs um, you could take cultural, a cultural aspect or a business and entrepreneurship program, which I was a part of. For the entrepreneurship and business program, I'll talk a little bit more about um, you had three core classes that you had to take and then you could pick two elective classes and they kind of referred you to two classes they want you, wanted you to take. Um, I took like Israeli economy, um, took international business, which counted for one of my high level finance courses and took a business ethics course. So there was a lot of great business opportunities on the cultural side, really everything from, from Jewish gangsters and then history of the Middle East. So there was an extensive course offering. So if, um, if you don't know the language, that is not a problem at all. Um, especially in Israel, they, a lot of, I would say majority of people speak English, so you can get around the country very swiftly um, knowing English. And also part of the program is they have um, a program called Ulpan, so your first month of being in Israel and at Tel Aviv University, you actually are learning Hebrew. My favorite phrase or word in the language, um, it would have to be Humus, um, they say it like that, and I've always said it um, like that ever since I've come back to the U.S. It just it rolls off the tongue nice, and there's humus and everything there. So uh, it's just a fun word to to learn, and it, it kind of helps you with the language too, because there's a lot of in the Hebrew language. I truly struggled um, to kind of learn the Hebrew language at first. It's very different than a Spanish and obviously English. Um, but I would honestly just try to use it as much as you can, just like any other language. Use it with your professor, especially in Ulpan. Um, use it on talking with taxi drivers around the city. Use it when you're with uh, waiters. They won't, they won't make fun of you and you'll really, it'll stick with you more when you're kind of under pressure in conversations too. So just try to force yourself to use it. Well, the food is outstanding and I know that's a very it's argued all over the world who has the best food. I would definitely say Israel has some of the best food and some of the healthiest food for sure. Um, everything from from shawarma on every street corner to um, lafa, which is a which is an Israeli bread that's homemade in a in a stone oven. Um, yeah, a lot of shawarma. I love the falafel. Falafel is incredible. You've never had good falafel until you've been to Israel, and especially hummus is um, some of the some of the best in the world. Israel in the dining aspect is very similar to the US. I would say it's it's casual. Obviously, if you're in an upper upper um, fashion restaurant, you definitely need to be dressed, but it's very similar to the US in the westernized um, dining experience. When you get into fashion, it's warm there. Um, you know, it's normally above 70 every day. The beaches are really close. So kind of having that um, cool beach feel, but also being kind of fancy. It's kind of hard to explain. I would say it's a fancy California um, feel. Um, Israel actually has an incredible public transportation system um, from buses that stop in every part of Tel Aviv, um, buses that run to Jerusalem, buses that run up to the Golan Heights, which is north by Syria, and then down to a lot, which is down by Jordan and Egypt. There, you can get anywhere in the country by bus and the train system is also extensive. You have to go to Jerusalem, the um, Temple Mount and the Western Wall and the food and the immaculate culture there is way different than Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is more modern and um, conservative. I would say Jerusalem lays on the very um, foundational roots and everything there is incredible, the old city is in perfect condition and you really will learn a lot going there, um, no matter your religion, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, 
Um, the city has it all of really the starting places of those religions. So it is, it's an incredible place that you have to visit. The second one in Tel Aviv, you have to go to Jaffa, which is a port city, a little bit south of the south of Tel Aviv. Um, it's an incredible experience, great food. Again, kind of like an old city like Jerusalem and um, was kind of the main founding place of how Tel Aviv started. So my favorite place that I traveled to in Israel, um, honestly, was probably the Dead Sea just because the deserts were expansive and floating in the Dead Sea was incredible. The most surprising thing that I saw, um, I would have to go back to when I visited Jerusalem. The city is broken into three main sectors. Um, the, the, Jewish, the, Jewish, you know, the Jewish neighborhood, the Christian neighborhood, um, and the Arabic neighborhood. It was, um, it was just incredible to see how you could walk from block to block in that city and you would literally shift complete cultures just within one city. Housing at Tel Aviv University, they do a great job. The main option is dorm style and it's a, it's a, sweet, it's a sweet style when you have a living area with a kitchen and a bathroom. So it's kind of everything you need. Another option you could pick is to live in what they call the Gindi apartments. It's in downtown Tel Aviv, a little bit outside of the university. Um, but you can live at um, those apartments as well, and those are apartment style. Luckily, I had one roommate, so we both had our own room, but my one roommate was from Singapore. Um, he actually was born in India, but goes to school in Singapore, so it was um, incredible to be able to live with him and to learn how he lived so different from the U.S. It was you know, incredible. Most people on the program were from the United States, but um, he, was, he was one that I was fortunate enough to have in my room and it was incredible to learn from. Luckily in this day and age, iMessage and all the internet messaging makes it very easy to contact home. Um, I would FaceTime my parents or FaceTime my grandparents if I wanted to connect with them. Um, obviously iMessage works perfect when you're on Wi-Fi and the dorms had Wi-Fi, the university had Wi-Fi everywhere on campus. So that's um, very nice. The program was very diverse, like I said, my roommate was from, from Singapore. There was a cool couple that we met um, from France, um, a very good friend from Brazil. Um, but I would say about 85% of people were from the United States. How can you immerse yourself into the culture? Um, there's really a lot of ways. The first one is get out and do things and be part of everything that the university has to offer. And also, um, don't be afraid to talk to some of the locals. They really want to meet you as well. Thank you.